This is a tutorial on how to build an oil boiler. Uh, first up though, I'm going to cover why you might actually want to build an oil boiler because it is a bit of an investment of time, effort and resources. If you already know why you want it, then just skip ahead a bit to the actual design. The reason to boil petroleum is because it's a sustainable power source that actually has some nice outputs and can give you an enormous amount of power if done correctly. Uh, it's all based on oil reservoirs. Uh, effectively think of them like the, the natural gas geysers of oil. Uh, oil wells, you, play, you pump in one kilo of water and it will pump out 3.3 kilos of crude oil. That 3.3 kilos of crude oil, we boil in a, a petroleum boiler and it will give us a one-to-one -one ratio of petroleum. If you try and run this through a regular oil refinery, you'll only get half the output. So you'll put in 10 kilos of crude oil and you'll only get out five kilos of petroleum. So by doubling the output using a direct heat conversion by heating the petroleum up to 403 degrees or heating the crude oil up to 403 degrees we get 100 percent conversion rate which means when we burn it in our petroleum generators the amount of polluted water that's kicked out we can then sieve that and we will have an actual excess of water to put back into the starting oil well uh, for every kilo of water you put into the to the oil well you'll get 1.2 kilos of polluted water back after you burn that uh, petroleum in a power generator this whole system generates about 3.3 kilowatts of power of course there will be some power taken for powering the oil well and your water sieve and the pumps involved and all that there is overhead but considering you can get three oil wells on a map which is not uncommon and two is usually about average that's if you get three oil wells up and running, you can effectively generate 10 kilowatts of power and maybe spend one and a half, one to one and a half kilowatts of power actually running the whole system. And on top of that, with three of them, you'd be kicking out 0.6 of a kilo of polluted water extra a second, all for the cost of, well, the duplicate labor required to run one water sieve composter. That's pretty much the only duplicate interaction required at that point. And the only thing to keep this perfectly sustainable forever would be filtration medium, which you can farm from regolith. And this is the reason you would want to employ a petroleum boiler. First up, the materials involved. You're gonna want some diamond temperature shift plates, a few of them to go in the magma section at least. This helps draw the heat out of the magma evenly. Otherwise you're gonna end up with parts of it being very hot and other parts of it being very cool. It's just, there's not a lot of uh, when magma solidifies it into igneous rock, there's not a lot of thermal shift there, so you do need some shift plates. Diamond is plentiful in the oil biome, so it's not too hard to get your hands on. A few diamond temperature shift plates in here. Uh, tungsten seal is what I like to use when dealing with any sort of magma. Uh, tungsten is basically the only thing that won't melt when it's around a metal volcano. So I, I just as a standard, anything to do with magma, I use tungsten. For the, the door, that's your thermal injector, and the door will want to be made out of steel. Uh, in fact, anything you're putting in around here, steel or tungsten, pretty much, just to make sure it does not melt. Now, the last and most expensive piece is these uh, radiant pipes along here. These radiant pipes are hugely important. They allow for a, a temperature shift change between the incoming crude oil and the outgoing petroleum. This is hugely important, but it also requires a lot of them. This is about 10 tons of gold, 10 tons of refined gold. Now, assuming you built yourself a decent industrial brick, 10 tons of refined gold should not be a problem. Um, there's no real way to, to counteract this. You could make a shorter run and use lots more diamond temperature shift plates, but diamond temperature shift plates cost 800 kilos of diamond per tile. One radiant pipe is 50 kilos of gold. It's just far cheaper to do it with gold, and usually it's plentiful enough. If you have any problems getting enough gold, just uh, look up a tutorial on how to make uh, an industrial brick uh, or an industrial oil design. It's it's fairly easy. Once you get one up and running, you can churn out enormous amounts of refined metals. I'll do a, a quick guide at the end on how to actually fill one of these tanks if you don't have a volcano to draw on. You don't need a volcano to get one of these up and running. You can actually draw the magma from uh, the geothermal magma down at the bottom. It's uh, it's a little bit tricky, it requires, a, it requires you to be very careful, but it can be done and it's not that difficult. This, uh, this magma tank will last, once it's full up to about here, it should last 350 to 400 cycles. Uh, that's assuming you run this at full capacity at 10 kilos per second. 
So this should get you pretty much all the petroleum you need to get to space, at which point you can rip out this whole magma container and just replace it with a, a space metals aqua tuner to provide your heat source. Uh, I'll cover more on that in the end as well. But for the time being, let's get into the actual design itself and how it f what functions. It's very straightforward. In fact, it's just the size needed to exchange the heat that's the problem. Uh, the crude oil just comes up and it winds its way up the heat exchange stairs until it gets to the actual petroleum boiler right here. Now, because of the mechanics of this game, it, when you drop liquids out of a vent, they will fall until they hit a solid surface. You can drop them through a hundred tiles of water, anything you want, but unless it hits a solid surface, it won't stop or interact with anything along the way. So you'll see this black tile here, that's where the crude oil has just hit the plate. Uh, the heat over here gets injected when the temperature here falls below 403 degrees. Let's put it up. So as you can see, it hits the bottom of the plate, instantly converts. If the temperature here ever drops below 403 degrees, which is the conversion point, steel door engages, heat is injected, crude oil is converted. Now, as it converts, it changes into petroleum for a bit, and then this sort of bubbles over the top. So it perc all the petroleum is basically percolating up and out the top. The size of this doesn't matter. Make it at least two tiles high, but beyond that, it doesn't really matter. I made some adjustments to this base uh, that make it slightly different from my test version because I had uh, things in the way and I had to adjust the size. But make this at least two tiles high and you'll be fine. Extra tiles on top of that don't really matter. Then the heated petroleum goes over, bubbles over the top and then just rolls down the heat exchange stairs. Left to right, left right to left, until it gets to the bottom where a pump extracts it. And uh, we send that off to our industrial brick or into a storage tank I've built over here. Now, the main benefits of this are, well, efficiency. The petroleum that's coming out of here is going to come out nice and cool, about 26 degrees hotter than the crude oil you put in. So depending on how your crude oil is shaked out uh, on the RNG side of it, maybe you had some broken abyssalite and some of this is, you know, 100, 200 degrees. But whatever temperature you put it in at, it will come out 26 degrees. The petroleum that comes out will be 26 degrees hotter, roughly, assuming you stick to this design. If you want to make a shorter run, you you quite you, you can do that. That's not a problem. However, the efficiency of the boiler will be less, meaning you won't get the same lifespan out of your magma, and the petroleum that comes out will be hotter. For example, if I was to remove 40 tiles of this, this is four stairs, four stair stairs, and each one's 50 tiles long. If I was to remove, say, 40 of them and have my collection point here, that would increase the output temperature by about 10 degrees from 26 to about 36. Well, that's what it did in testing. It takes a little bit of time to shake out. It's about 20 cycles for the temperature to even out everywhere. But that's why we make it exactly 200 tiles long, just to get the, the, the right level of efficiency. There is a dimin case of diminishing returns on the longer you make this. So this was about the, the perfect sweet spot, as far as I could tell. You may want to experiment with the length yourself. Now I'm just going to do a quick jump over to a test map where uh, I stress tested this design to make sure it would run the full length and all that. And uh, back to you in one second. This is the oil boiler torture test map and it's uh, end of life. This is the point where the actual magma itself is hitting a temperature where it will no longer be able to boil the crude oil successfully. Um, in behind this tile here, it's you now smothered by igneous rock since the magma hardened, is a temperature sensor. It's set to 425 degrees. That is linked back up here to the uh, liquid shutoff. When this hits 425 degrees, I don't want to be dumping any more crude oil in here. Otherwise, it's eventually going to fill it up, bubble over, and then I'm going to be pumping crude oil where I don't want. So I've set it to 425. You can lower the temperature a bit. Uh, I'm leaving in a nice safety margin here because, honestly, the amount of crude oil it will produce over its life, by the time you get to the end of this, it should be a case of you replacing it with something else uh, to heat it. If you really want to, you could just mine this out again and fill it back up with more magma if you really want to. Choice is yours. This design has lasted 383 cycles, according to my notes. So it will run for quite a long time and should provide most of your oil needs. And that's assuming you're running it at 10 kilos, as in you have three oil wells to feed it or enough reserve oil and oil wells to keep it going for that long. Uh, that produces, I think it's 1,800 tons of petroleum. Uh, I've been pumping the crude oil from here through the petroleum boiler and dumping it over this side and uh, that's about what it looks like when it's when you that's what it looks like after it's all finished that's the the, the quantity in the visual aid format of how much petroleum you'll end up with 
by and large, you'll be burning most of this as you make it though, so you shouldn't need a storage tank that large. There's only a very minimal amount of automation included here. Uh, I didn't want to make this too complicated. I like to keep the design simple and robust. Uh, the first one is I just uh, put in an OR gate on the door. So you have a switch to turn it off at the start. You don't want that door engaging before you started dumping in your crude oil. Otherwise, you're just going to be superheating the air in here to 403 degrees. And I don't like dumping 403 degree air into my base. So putting in a, an OR gate hooked up to the temperature sensor as well. This way, when I turn this on, it will start work. Once I turn this switch to uh, uh, the on position, it can potentially allow the door to close. And so long as the ter thermal sensor agrees, they'll both let the door close and inject the heat. The second one is a little bit of automation hooked up to the liquid pump. Uh, once the liquid pump, the actual uh, liquid shut off. I, I don't want the oil coming in, or maybe at some point I'll want to shut this off, assuming I have too much petroleum or there's some sort of issue I want to fix to do maintenance. Uh, this switch here allows me to turn off the crude oil being dropped in so I can effectively shut down the design. Now, to a no few notes on the design, it does take time to heat up. You're going to run, a, run this for about 20 cycles before it's going to hit perfect efficiency. Uh, the crude oil will usually be preheated up to about 385 degrees by the time it gets in there, assuming you're using this design. There is actually a few things I want to try to actually improve the efficiency, but I was quite happy with the design and I torture tested this out fully. So I'm not going to try any of the things I mentioned, any of the things I, I'm planning on implementing in future designs. Just this should do plenty for all of your petroleum boiling needs. Of course, there's always a few caveats with every uh, testing. Uh, this was tested on super speed, so I don't know if that caused any issues. It shouldn't, but I just thought I'd mention it just in case you think it might be a problem. Uh, secondly, I've only tested this at 10 kilos per second. Uh, I ran a brief test for about 20 cycles with 6.6 .6 kilos per second. It, it kept functioning. It's just the output dropped off. Uh, I haven't actually torture tested anything less than 10 kilos, so I, I'm not aware of any problems or can't think of any problems that could be caused by running this at lower than 10 kilos. But I, I just thought I'd make, let you, make you aware of that information in case that uh, influences your decision to utilize this or not. Next up, we'll just cover using a thermal aqua tuner in this, and after that, I'll cover how to fill your magma tank without blowing up your base. Okay, so all I've done here is I've ripped out the igneous rock that used to be magma, and I've replaced it with an aqua tuner made of nobidium. Or, yeah, nobidium. Uh, that can go up to 500 degrees, so you simply slot one of those in here, and set a temperature sensor hooked up to the aqua tuner to keep the temperature in here. I've set it to 450. 450 degrees seems plenty. Uh, I'm running super coolant through this. You can also run water through it, but it will be less energy efficient. Uh, by running super coolant through this, the average wattage, according to my notes, is you will use about 350 watts to keep this running or to, to inject enough heating into this to keep 10 kilos of crude oil converting constantly. Uh, if you don't have super coolant to run through this, you can run water, but that will increase your power draw to about 700 watts. So by and large, it's pretty energy efficient at that point. I've got the reports here. Let's go back. Uh, power usage. So yeah, running super coolant, you'll you'll actually be using less power on the aqua tuner than you would on the two liquid pumps it takes to pump liquid in and out of the actual oil boiler. Now in real life testing, you're going to need power for the actual oil wells as well and uh, power for the water sieves. Uh, you can actually cut down on the energy usage if you say have this feed instead of having this drop down to a, a liquid pump You could maybe drop it into a storage tank In fact if I had been thinking ahead I would have put the petroleum on this side and I could have just dripped it straight in and cut out one water One liquid pump from the design Depends on your map the space you have where you're going to place it all of that But uh, it's generally quite energy efficient and should give you quite a, a net positive of power to work with the cooling here, I'm just dumping that into this water tank. I just ran some running piping just to dispose of the cooling. You'd probably want to use the cooling from this for something useful. Worst case scenario, you can always just cool the petroleum coming out of here so it can be even cooler than before. Uh, oh, one last note, the reason, one, one of the, the, the strong reasons for running it this long and having your, your petroleum output so cool is I intend on running this petroleum through uh, metal refineries and dumping heat into it before I destroy it in my power plants. That's one of the, the best reasons for building one of these is the petroleum that comes out of here is cool enough that you can still dump it into a into your metal refineries. And so long as it comes out below 125 degrees, you can actually store it in gold amalgam liquid tanks. Uh, it's just generally a lot easier to deal with cool petroleum. 
as well as that if your petroleum is coming out of here at hotter than 275 degrees you won't actually be able to use a liquid pump to extract it so well until you get to space but you wouldn't really want to be using this design if you've already got space material you could you could probably come up with something a little bit more efficient but uh, i like to design it this way so that you can build it in the mid game and then just slot this in the moment you hit space space and you only need a small amount or a relatively small amount of space materials to just plug into your original design meaning there's no ripping things down and building them back up again okay let's cover how to fill a magma tank dealing with this stuff is exceptionally dangerous so what we have done over here is we have tapped into a magma a pile of magma we have hooked it up with a pitcher pump made of ceramic and we have made sure that the room we are using is a complete vacuum i actually just built this here first and then excavated the rest out so i didn't have to use an air pump I just basically built this uh, entrance gateway here and then once I started digging out here there was no atmosphere to take up any space. A little bit of oil down here, mop that up. But now that we have the pitcher pumped down we can literally just transport magma around the place. Will hurt the duplicants to tra carry it but they'll recover. And then we just have a couple of pitcher pumps over here or a couple of uh, emptiers and we'll see where's it? Magma! There we go. And let's make that stupidly high priority and enable auto bottling and let's copy those settings over here perfect now realistic you'd want about four or five of these because one duplicate can carry about a thousand kilos at least this one's only going to pick up 400 kilos because that's the maximum that's being requested and here comes our duplicate for a nice magma top up 400 kilos now, one thing, it is a bit of a long journey, and just in case at some point they decide it's lunchtime, I've basically sealed off areas on ladders and stuff like that where they could accidentally drop it into liquids or somewhere that could be awkward. I can't do anything about the liquid locks. You just got to get hope you don't get caught there. Because if they get called to lunch while they're in the middle of a delivery, it does cause problems. Now, we're checking them there. Health is 100, 100. No bothers. Perfect. So this is what allows you to actually fill one of these magma tanks without having access to a volcano. You can just use geothermal magma. It's just as good. It'll do the job. It's actually slightly cooler, but this has been tested thoroughly with uh, weaker magma, so it will work fine for at least 350 cycles. That is the minimum you will get out of this. And that's assuming you're pumping 10 kilos of, cru of crude oil through it a second. So this will last you... 350 cycles minimum at which point you should have already hit space if not you'll have to fill it a second time uh, one last note it might be an idea to put four bottle emptiers here it'll just speed up the filling process otherwise this is going to take about 15 cycles and great a has got in again God, they get everywhere uh, a few last notes you you don't need to turn this into a vacuum there's no need to vacuum this place out um yes i left that vent there it's a hydrogen vent it's completely useless so that's why it was left in there um additionally oil wells yeah you can sometimes only get one oil well on a map and if you have only one oil well this may not be in your best interest to use however there's normally enough oil on a map uh, i think it's about there's usually well over 100 1000 to 1500 tons of oil already so assuming you've got access to that it's usually pretty decent to a uh, decent investment to build one of these uh, if you don't have say five or six natural gas geysers lying around your map this is by far the most efficient way to generate huge amounts of power. Unless you've already got access to space and can put down lots and lots of solar panels. But uh, doing it this way, you you don't need to be anywhere near space to actually get, you don't need to be anywhere near space at all to actually generate enough power and do all the things you need to do to get into the, the very late game. 